Back in the 1970s, China was falling apart. Famine had killed more than 36 million people. The regime gave up control and allowed private farming. Some smaller farmers turned to catching and raising wild animals as a way to sustain themselves. In 1988, the government protected people engaged in the utilization of wildlife resources. The law encouraged the domestication and breeding of wildlife. Small local farms turned into industrial-sized operations. This bear farm grew to more than a thousand bears. These animals were funneled into the wet markets for profit. Eight days, Dr. Li Wenliang went from treating patients to becoming one. Li sent a group message saying that a test result from a patient quarantined at the hospital where he worked showed a patient had a coronavirus. Within days, they closed the suspected source of the virus, this seafood market, and they announced the outbreak. But instead of being praised, Li got a call from Wuhan City Police. The Wuhan Municipal Health Commission maintained that there was no obvious evidence for human-to-human -human transmission. They think that this virus hopped onto a bat as its reservoir, mutated enough, got transferred to a pangolin, mutated enough that it can now infect a human and cause COVID-19. They would need all these hosts to encounter each other at some point. That's where the Wuhan market comes in. Animals at the bottom uh, were, are often soaked with all kinds of liquid animal excrement, pus, blood, or whatever the liquid they're receiving from uh, the animals uh, above. Then came a sudden jump in infections. China's central government took over, scrambling to contain a spreading virus with a rising death toll. 83-year-old epidemiologist Zhong Nanshan, regarded as a national hero during the 2002-2003 SARS crisis, broke the news to the public. Ten a.m. January twenty-third. Wuhan goes into lockdown, an effort to stop the deadly virus from spreading further through the nation. Nine million people were still in the city. I'm declaring a public health emergency of international concern over the global outbreak of novel coronavirus. The main reason for this declaration is not because of what is happening in China. Our greatest concern is the potential for the virus to spread to countries with weaker health systems. We have it totally under control. It's one person coming in from China, and we have it under control. It's uh, going to be just fine. Doctors and nurses have to wear two layers of protective suits, hand gloves, shoe covers, face masks, and goggles before entering the special ward. During their six-hour shift, they can't drink, eat, or even use the toilet. We pretty much shut it down coming in from China. February, over 10,000 medical workers from the rest of China had gone to help. And that number tripled in the following weeks. Good news came out on February 2nd. The first emergency hospital, Huashanshan, started to take in severely ill coronavirus patients. Less than two weeks after construction work began. CGTN reached out to him, but he was already severely ill with the coronavirus. But that day never came. On February 7th, Lee passed away. You know, in April, supposedly, it dies with a hotter weather. Inside the virus, genetic material contains the information to make more copies of itself. A protein shell provides a hard protective enclosure for the genetic material as the virus travels. An outer envelope allows the virus to infect cells by merging with the cell's outer membrane. Projecting from the envelope are spikes of protein molecules. One spike on the virus inserts into a receptor molecule on your healthy cell membrane like a key in a lock. This action allows the virus to get inside your cell. The coronavirus doesn't need to enter the host cell nucleus. Ribosomes use genetic information from the virus to make viral proteins, such as the spikes on the virus's surface. All the parts needed to create a new virus gather just beneath your cell's membrane. 
Then, a new virus begins to bud off from the cell's membrane. Normally, as you breathe, air moves freely into tiny sacs called alveoli. The virus can overwhelm your immune cells, and your bronchioles and alveoli become inflamed as your immune system attacks the multiplying viruses. The inflammation can cause your alveoli to fill with fluid, making it difficult for your body to get the oxygen it needs. There's no question that China's bold approach to the rapid spread of this new respiratory pathogen has changed the course of what was a rapidly escalating and, and continues to be deadly epidemic. And in Wuhan, the number of daily new cases is on the verge of dropping into double digits. In fact, we're very close to a vaccine. We're going down, not up. We're going very substantially down. We have done an incredible job. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue. It's going to disappear. One day, it's like a miracle. It will disappear. They tried the impeachment hoax. And this is their new hoax. At a Washington state hospital, thousands of miles away from China's coronavirus epicenter, tragic news, the first coronavirus death in the United States. The CDC says it was likely community spread, meaning the source of infection is unknown and patients have not recently traveled or been exposed to someone confirmed to be at risk. Ferocious unraveling in the stock market. On Thursday alone, the Dow fell 2,300 points. Altogether, more than two and a half years of gains under President Trump are gone. The U.S. economy is grinding to a halt. Social distancing has the travel industry in a rough patch not seen since the days after 9-11. Thousands of schools are closed, millions of Americans working from home. For the foreseeable future, life in Santa Clara County will be drastically different. To prevent the further spread and to protect our critical health care infrastructure. The public health officers of Alameda, Contra Costa, Marin, San Francisco, San Mateo and Santa Clara counties, along with the city of Berkeley, jointly issuing a legal order for all residents to shelter at home for the next three weeks. The Santa Clara County Office of Education also announced a decision to close county schools to students for the next three weeks. The student with coronavirus is now self-isolating. Stanford announced that is backtracking where that student frequented. Stanford senior Hannah Chua Reyes has her bags packed. Stanford paid for her ticket home. Last night we received an email saying we had to leave. Something that we have uh, tremendous control of. The top infectious disease expert here in the United States who totally contradicted what the president said. Because as I've said many times, and I'll repeat it, the worst is yes ahead for us. Markets are plunging uh, today. Uh, the Dow Jones Industrial uh, Average uh, sinking almost uh, 3,000 points. And this is despite the, the Federal Reserve's action over the weekend, uh, cutting interest rates to zero, uh, pouring uh, billions of dollars into mortgage-backed securities and, and government bonds. Today, the restaurant chain closed all locations in Oregon and Washington and laid off 3,000 people, almost everyone in the company. I've always known this is a, this is a real, this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. Cultivating the one month in the forest look. It's growing out because of my cultivation. Every second counts as federal, state, and local workers rush to get the Santa Clara Convention Center ready for COVID-19 patients. Today, the 146 airlift unit of the National Guard will spend 12 hours setting up this makeshift hospital. So this is a low acuity medical setting. We would not have um, ventilated patients here. Uh, there are a set of medical supplies that come along with this federal medical station. Um, it does include things like IVs in the event that a patient needs that. Goal is to free up hospital beds for the sickest patients. Volunteers doctors and nurses from across the state will run this hospital. Now clusters of coffins arrive every day with his parishioners laid on the marble floor of St. Joseph's Church in the town of Seriate in northern Italy. He and other priests give them a hasty blessing before a forklift loads them onto army trucks. Effective today, Bay Area public health officers released a slew of new stricter stay-at-home rules and changes what was considered to essential business. New numbers out of Washington. That's right. The White House is now predicting this virus could kill anywhere between 100 to 240,000 people here in the U.S. alone if physical distancing measures are followed. When you look at places like California that aggressively mitigated in social distance, 
they were able to level and flatten their curves. And so we're looking at this next 30 days as an opportunity for the entire country to really understand if we do the right things, then we can flatten our curves in our own different areas and actually get, get to the other side.